Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge the Lines Forever. Today, I have a six-player phantom game here on the map, Bunny Roanoke version 13. So let's go ahead and introduce our players here. Starting off at the 12 o'clock position in Stitch Blue, it is VIP going first land. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. He is going Aeon at the 2 o'clock position. We have in Royal Blue of... Cy Beltron instead of Cybertron it's Cy Beltron going as a Aeon as well in the four o'clock position in Chevy Crimson we have Nick zero one as a Seraphim and I'm just going to ski this up just a little bit because it does take a little bit for this game to get on rolling in green and emerald green specifically we have Merton now that's how you say it, Merton, and he is going as another Seraphim in the 8 o'clock position here in light, sorry, in Tropical Ocean Blue. We have Captain Nemo, and he's going Seraphim as well. And last but not least here in the game, in Snow White, we have Overlord 1313. Very nice number there, Overlord. And again, he is playing as an Aeon in Snow White. And for those of you who are not familiar with Phantom Games... It is kind of like Among Us and Deceit, kind of like those other games where there's a couple of, I guess in this time, Phantoms, but in other games, Traders or, um, in, not Intruders, what are they called? In, I forget what they're called in Among Us. But anyway, it's pretty much the Innocents, which is going to be four of them, and there's going to be two Phantoms. And essentially, it's the Innocents versus everyone else being the two Phantoms. And then for the Phantom... They win by eliminating everyone else. So essentially, it's 1v1v4. And so currently, if we look at the Ecos right now, we can see that it kind of looks like White being Overlord 1313 and Merlot, oh, sorry, Merton, maybe it's Merto, I, anyway, maybe it's French, Looks like they are the two phantoms. Phantoms get an eco boost in this game, and so that's how because it's again it's essentially you know one v five if you count it that way. So they need it like a boost to eco just to kind of keep pace with everyone else. And no one knows who they who everyone is. You can see where you know everyone is aligned with everyone, so you don't really know who is doing like who is the phantom, who is the you know the innocent, whatever the case may be. You only really can kind of figure that out by pacing and all that in the beginning. But eventually, let me speed this up just a little bit more probably. Uh, eventually, you'll figure out that, oh, he's building a lot of these units or he's building a lot of, you know, experimentals or whatever the case may be. And a lot of the big plays are going to be just producing as many Rascoms as possible. Unfortunately, with the highlight ACU mod that I have, the RAS ACUs in this mod only, in the Phantom mod only, for some reason duplicate the highlight. And so all of the Seraphim players, if, when they use Seraphim uh, RAS comms, there will be a lot of highlights. So again, apologies for that. I haven't found a workaround for that yet. If anybody does know for a workaround with the highlight mod with Phantom, let me know down in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. But from a bird's eye view, we can easily tell who are the... Sarah from players, considering you have all these little highlights everywhere. So we have at least, was it four? Let's see, one, two, three. And see, as you can tell, the Aeon, com this rat, not RAS, Aeon SACUs do not do that. For, again, for some reason, don't know why the Seraphim are different. Don't know how that works. But essentially, it's Aeon in the 10, 12, and 2 positions in terms of a clock face, and then 4, 6, and 8. With the southern side being Seraphim. And let's check on Ecos. Again, I sped this up because this is like the boring part. It's not really enjoyable to just sit there and wait for 20 minutes for or 20, 25 minutes to like wait for the actual action to get on. So that's why I sped it up as much as I did. And you can go as high as 50, but of course, it'll only go as high as the actual sim speed will let you. And just to preface this, this game does get a little hectic. You'll you'll see the the wear down of the <laughs> the of FAF as time goes on, and just terms of because there's so many units that end up getting built, it's just kind of slow. Just because you have you know so many calculations, so many things going on at the same time, it's hard for 
you know, the system to process all of those things going on. But look at all this highlight mod. Look at them all. Uh, I'm going to have to keep track of where the commander is. But as of right now, it's right here. And he is going for, I think he's going for ARAS. Now he's going for Nano. Doesn't tell me the the upgrade he's going for, sadly. But we are seeing, again, upgrades into the T3 naval tech scenario. I think everyone has access to T3 except for Overlord, who's going for that. A Paladin has been marked. So the Paladin, we slow down just a little bit. The Paladin is essentially like a mini Phantom for the Innocents. It's like, I forget what the percentage that the Phantoms get, but it's half of the bonus eco that the phantom gets that the paladin gets and so essentially if the phantoms guess correctly they know who the paladin is and i, I don't know if he loses the i forgot to check the the notification that pops on screen i think he loses the eco boost i can't remember but again you can just tell now in terms of who is the phantoms just based on the numbers alone, we're already at 2k mass per second for Overlord and 1.6. Overlord is severely echoing out everyone else, but it does look like shots are being fired against Overlord. The Innocence, or at least VIP, has noticed that, hey, you're building a lot of stuff. I don't like that, and I think you're the Phantom, and so now he's going to open fire on those units on that island. Maybe I'll keep it at one, but it does look like the other Phantom player of Merton has revealed himself. So essentially, the player of Captain Nemo is stuck between two Phantoms. Not the best position to be in, to be honest. We have the Innocents having a decent size, in, uh, I was going to say infantry, but frigate force with assisting battleships here from Nick Zero Run. He is pumping those things out, has a secondary facility online with hives. And in Phantom, everyone gets access to Hives regardless of what faction you belong to. It just makes the eco things a lot easier and you can, you know, scale the build power and all of that a lot better. Who broke with whom? Sorry, who broke with whom? And it looks like there's conversations in chat. Let's see if there's anything of note. I don't see. I think there's some French in there as well. I don't read or speak or understand French, so apologies but not knowing what they say. I don't know what German says. I don't know what uh, Russian says. So sometimes viewers help me out by saying this is what that was said pretty much. And I do appreciate that. And for the, the commenter who did translate those Russian comments yesterday. Yeah, essentially two days ago of the recording when I recorded the video. And then yesterday when it came out. I appreciate that. Just kind of knowing what is being said, because you can't just auto-translate. I wish there was a feature where if you typed whatever language in, it would auto-translate for everyone else, but it doesn't do that. That'd be a cool feature. And so we're seeing the combat going on, which is kind of early. Usually it's about 25 minutes or so when we see the naval game start to kick off. But I'm going to start getting some nice little shots of all this navy. Usually, you know, you see a lot more navy than this before, you know, shots are fired. But Merton probably wants to get some nice little buffer zones going on. We have, of course, Nick trying to hold back the incoming threat. It is Seraphim on Seraphim with some Aeon tech in there. No UEF and no Cybrans. I hardly see any Cybrans in these games. I usually see at least one UEF player. UEF Navy is pretty strong in this game. Especially with the Neptunes, especially with the, the Summits are really strong. The Atlantis, of course. But a lot of players do go for Aeon just due to the T4 Tempest. This thing is a beast and just deals massive amounts of damage and just has an incredible amount of range. And you can just see the scaling here. We have the Phantom player of Murtan just pumping out way more Hothooms. And it's almost a 2v1 scenario here. Eventually, Nick will run out of battleships. It's just... Not necessarily, he's not going to micro them, you know, all the time. We're even seeing some reclaim units on the Prowl here. They're going to start circling the water in this eastern side. We're even seeing the spread to the west here against Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo kind of just hanging out on his base, slowly pumping out, pum pummeling, uh, pummeling, pumping out some units against the forces of Overlord, but Overlord is focused more on taking out VIP. VIP is the highest rated player in the game at 2100. 
The lowest is 1100 at Captain Nemo with a 14, you know, 15, 19, and 1700. So again, that's a nice spread. It isn't too one-sided. We have, you know, a decently high-rated player for the Phantoms, a decently high-rated player for the other Phantom, and then the highest-rated player for VIP, which I feel is a very good uh, balancing. And again, this negative one balancing, it isn't a... It, because it's a different type of mod, it's not rated on the system, so that's why it's negative one and not, you know, 80 or 90 or whatever the percentage might have been for this game. But we, the Czar very early here from Overlord, usually you don't see Czars till a little later on. And a lot of players, just due to the fact that they don't have a lot of, you know, land space, they build a lot of aircraft carriers to pump out their ASF or gunships or whatever the case may be. But we'll see a lot of those as time goes on. And then, of course, we have the strategy of just building an absorbent amount of just either T1, T2, or T3 naval facilities just to pump out units. The players have been revealed at 22 minutes. Let the games begin, but we already know who they were a couple of minutes of go. This is the 117th cast on the channel. It's crazy that I've casted this many games. Going on straight for at least three months now with one every single day. I'm grateful for everyone that has subscribed to the channel, liked the videos, commented. I just... I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much. And what is this? So now we have the naming mod. And VIP has taken it upon himself to name all of all of his Rascoms VIP just to maybe confuse his opponent. Let's see. His comm is over here. And his comm is named VIP. And you can tell that the Aeon Commander is a little bit different than the Rascoms. But out of just slow a, a short glance, they are very similar. So, it's interesting strategy. Does Overlord even notice that? No, he doesn't see the names. But when he hovers over them, he does see they're called VIP and they are T3 ASAC. So, you can't get away with it, you know, perfectly. There is a way to, you know, see through the lies. But uh, at least it's kind of a nice, just funny little, like, hey, all my SACUs are named VIP. So, good luck. Seeing a lot of T2 torp bombers coming after these battleships we're seeing a lot of that grid go up in flames of course they are mass fabricator farms trying to pump out as much eco as they can and again both of the phantoms are over 2k mass per second versus vip and everyone else struggling to get to get above 1k we're seeing some t4 tempest try to help assist nick to the east but you can see that wave of green starting to just engulf his opponent. Same thing happening to the north. We're seeing a small fleet here for Captain Nemo. But it does look like Overlord is more focused on taking out the highest rated player. Considering this is essentially the best position to sit in for the Innocence. Which is Cyber Beltron. I'm going to say Cybertron. Apologies. It's just going to come out. It's really hard. It's not hard. It's just I'm so accustomed to say Cybertron versus Cybeltron. So again, I apologize if I keep saying that name as time goes on. But he's sitting in the best position in terms of he's the furthest away from the Innocents. Sorry, from the Innocents, from the Phantoms. He's surrounded by two Innocents. And, of course, the other Innocents on the other side of the map, which would be the worst place to sit. But it does look like he's being avo avoided for now. It does look like the Phantoms are focusing on the higher-rated targets first and going after the lower-rated targets next. And you can just see, look at the engulfment that's happening around Nix's base. He's trying to pump out some shields as best he can, but he is struggling to keep up, pumping out T2 torp bombers just to assist and taking out. We even see Zooey with their little artillery cannons trying to damage these Hothooms, and it's really hard to micro. It's just a large fleet constantly. You have to do a bunch of other things at the same time. That's where a this is like a true test of APM. Like, how much APM do you actually have? And especially if you're playing as a phantom or even just an innocent being attacked in this scenario, you have to have, s you know, just a ton of APM just at your disposal constantly. There is no letting up. And we are seeing a couple of these Yasaos get in and take out this T3 naval headquarters. But there is another one on the eastern side. Good job from Overlord having a backup. We even see the Aeon T3 Solus uh, Torp Bomber. Very effective. Deal lots and lots of damage. 
I'm hearing explosions go off all the time. I don't like hearing those all the time just due to the fact that I think those are a um, a commander exploding. So I'm like, no, did I miss something? But it was not. I'm looking at the uh, levels on my uh, recording, and I feel like it's a little high, but I, I don't know. Like It seems like it's high, but maybe not. I don't know. It's hard to judge because it's just based on the decibel numbers. But anyway... We have a couple more Tempests approaching the front line here. It does look like this force of battleships is being dealt with quite handedly by Team One's combined forces from Cybeltron and Nick-01. They're doing a pretty good job holding off that Phantom. It does look like Team Innocent on the north side has done a decent job, but there's just so many more battleships here, and that land army of... Rascoms is not is it's just feeling it right now. It's feeling the struggle of just trying to pump out as many shields. Hives are being annihilated. Overlord pumping out more and more of these tempests. He wants to get you know further, further eastward. That's probably his main goal is taking out the player of Cybeltron. We're seeing a couple of torque bombers go after the com. Oh, actually not com. They're Rascoms, but they were going after some moving com moving. SACUs here for Captain Nemo. Again, that highlight mod is really throwing me off. I have to, like, maybe do a different mod when I do Phantoms. I don't like having to constantly switch out mods, but the fact that there's three players that are Seraphim and there's a bunch of highlights, not helpful. No apologies for that. Just so many shots being fired constantly. We're at 27 minutes in game time. And let's take a look at Ecos once again. Okay, we have the first player on the Innocence team above 1K, and that is Cybeltron, which makes sense because he's the most, uh, pr not protected, but he's the best situated uh, player in the game in terms of being away from his opponents. But just the bombardment is too strong here for VIP. He's going to have to retreat, take some Rascoms with you, and flee. He has set up a base over here to the east, which he's been for a very long time. Essentially, the beginning of the... Not beginning, the pretty close to the beginning of the game. He kind of fled eastward because he knew that eventually he was going to be attacked. Just kind of how it goes. But look at all this T1, T2 spam with Tempest and just a bunch of Othams going eastward. It does look like there's a lot of focus against Captain Nemo again uh, by Overlord 1313. He wants to at least hem him off in this corner. You know, an interesting play would have been just taking all of his Rascoms and fleeing this way all the way to Psy Beltron's main, you know, area of the map. He could have set up shop with some uh, quantum gateways and just pumped out some Rascoms and just saved himself. Because eventually this is going to be just dead. Like, he's not going to last very long here. You know, we have a couple of Zooey down here in the south taking out a whole bunch of spam factories. Is that his calm? No. I don't know where his calm is. I'm assuming it's in the water. Yep, there he is right there. So, again, he's in the water. He has a nuke. Very interesting play here going for a nuke. Usually a lot of uh, players go for, you know, the YOLO if they have access to it, of course. Uh, I've seen Phantoms go Paragon, but it's, it's very risky because, of course, it's very volatile if it explodes. And this is a very heavy naval map. So essentially most, if not all, of the naval units can hit the island. So it's very difficult to shield the Paragon and keep it online for an extended period of time. T3 Naval Headquarters here for VIP is going down. He's going to lose access to that T3 tech and essentially knock him out of the game in terms of that technology. He can still build the Tempest, though, from what I remember. You don't need T3 Naval Tech for that. But he's going to be limited to essentially just that. And it's not really looking good for him right now. So we'll see how that progresses on that northern side. does look like the Innocents are holding very strong here, or at least more strong than they are on the northern side. And that's the downside with playing as a Phantom is you want to, you know, you team up with your Phantom buddy, you want to push back the Innocents, but eventually you have to say, okay, I have to win this game by myself. When is a good time to break? And I feel like, at least for Overlord, if he were to break with Morton, after he takes out Captain Nemo, that would be probably the one of the better moves because as long as Nick and the Innocents can hold off on the eastern side, Overlord can come in from the west and completely decimate this position. So we'll have to see how Overlord plays his hand. 
You're going to be seeing more and more tempers coming off the line here. There's a lot of firepower here. They're starting to beat back the Phantom Player of Merton. He's not pumped. He doesn't have access to those technologies with the uh, with the Tempest. So those are huge assets. 60,000 hit points compared to the 49,000. And the first nuke of the game is launched by Captain Nemo. I figured everyone has at least some sort of nuke uh, defense. But he's actually going for these Tempests here in the middle with a decent amount of these Vespers. And he is being pummeled here on the northwestern side of the map. There goes that nuke. Very pretty nuke. Kaboom. Takes out one Tempest. At least he eliminated some firepower. You can see that base starting to crumble. He needs to essentially just send his Rascoms this way just to protect himself. There's even a couple of Strat Bombers in the mix as well to help assist with damage. But we can just tell that this is not going to go... Captain Nemo's way. His shields are already down. He's losing his Rascom facilities. He's pumping out some air units, but he can only go as fast as he can. He got one nuke out, but I don't think he's going to get another one out unless he flees, which we'll see if that occurs. The Overlord player has completely annihilated VIP's position. He's taken out essentially every structure that VIP owns except for a couple of naval facilities. He is essentially out of this game producing 48 mass a second and I think that's on his comm essentially just 37 mass on his commander alone overlord starting to reclaim this position and probably build more and more of these t3 mexes just to pump out even more eco we can even tell team two not team two Merton is catching up he's at 2.4 versus 2.6 of overlord but you know again it's just devastating when you see a high rated player just only have like 50 mass a second to his name it's just it's hard to watch because you like you want him to you know you want all the players to succeed in general but it's you know it's not really looking good for the innocents right now we are seeing again a lot of this naval fleet is now being dealt with once again that is a lot of battleships here for the green player of Morton. essentially their main threat is those battleships the tempest they have a couple of groups of hathums over here to the east but just the firepower and we even have a chicken that made landfall took out some of the shielding as well and i don't see any more chickens right now very interesting play just tried to do some base damage essentially i don't see any more chickens gg says nemo to nick and allies i think that might call it here for nemo he's trying to flee as he can but he's being chased down all of his Rascoms are trying to flee. That thing I was mentioning earlier should have happened like five, ten minutes ago. It's a little too late for that. Even the Zara comes in to assist as well. And it's going to pummel the rest of this base to shreds. What? Does he know that? I'm assuming he notices those. Um, I was like, yeah, I was like, he should know those Rascoms are in the water. There goes the laser. Actually turns it off very briefly and he's going to use those depth charges on those uh, on that Zara to pummel whatever he can. I think they're targeting the comm directly under yep they're targeting the comm directly this is going to be the first kill of the game here he goes kaboom bro don't tell me again you ally in a full ecoing I don't know what that's about but uh, that is the first innocent, innocent assassinated and it is a no share game. All of this will be control Cade. And now Overlord has control essentially over the northwestern side of the entire map. Essentially along this diagonal, he has three bases to himself. The Innocence and the remaining Phantom, at least on the other side, need to think about teaming up. And it does look like that has occurred. All of those units here for Merton are moving to that western side gearing up for an attack you can see he's been the phantom of Merton has allied himself with the rest of the innocents so it's essentially overlord is only allied with the other phantoms but Merton is allied with everyone he should be breaking that alliance here pretty quickly blue was 50 50 was both of them he has about 50 rascoms 50 on me 50 on you conversations between the phantoms back and forth and I think what Merton is doing is just positioning his forces to the west just to prepare for the incoming threat that is Overlord. Because essentially what Overlord can do is once he takes over the other Phantom's base, that's it. 
You just have the two innocents, and it's four bases versus two, and that usually only goes one way. The innocents need to gear up their eco right now. They have time. You know, they're still attacking the other phantom here f of Overlord. And there's more and more Tempest appearing on this northwestern side. We have ASF flying around the map trying to take out those T2 Torp Bombers. And man, it's just a slaughter up here to the north for the Innocents. And of course, the Merton is not going to, you know, just completely leave his eastern flank bare. He has a lot of Yasaos here, a lot of Torp potential. Both teams or both players are just focusing on eco right now, just scooping up as much mass as they can. They're just kind of just hanging out, having a nice beer, you know, swapping stories, whatever the case may be. It's essentially Christmas Day in World War One, where the Allies and was it no the both not the, not the Allies that was World War Two. What were they called? But essentially, the Germans and I think the British were fighting, and then on Christmas Day they're like, oh, we'll shake, you know, we'll you know, shake hands, play games swap gifts whatnot and then they went back to fighting the next day but it was just kind of a break it was a really cool uh, story that i read about and i think there's like a, a i don't think there's a movie there's like a video on it or something i don't know i've seen it something recently about it but anyway the game has slowed down a little bit we've seen that you know there's still some fighting over here on this northern side of the map but essentially it's just waiting for the alliance to be broken and feel like Merton's going to do that here very quickly. Of course, once you're allied with somebody, you know where their comm is, you know where everything is. And especially you have mods on like me where you can see, like, this is where the comm is, this is what this is, you know, all the positioning and everything. Once you break, that intel goes away. So he's got to use it very carefully. We have a couple of, not strap bombers, but torp bombers coming southward from VIP. I don't know... Where they're going. We're just flying over Merton's base. I mean, they're allied with him, so I don't know why that's why he's flying them over there. Maybe he's just flying into friendly territory, probably. Southeast Asian pouring rain. Might lose electricity soon. Oh, wow. That uh, that would suck if you just lost electricity while playing, especially this game. Like, any, any game where you just leave because your computer restarted or you lose power, it just sucks. It's It's not great. I feel like these uh, Tempests can pop out of the water and kill this other Tempest. It'd be, it'd be killed a lot quicker, but I do understand trying to at least save as many hit points as you can. But this one's going to die anyway, so you might as well pop it out of the water at least to get a couple shots. And that is a, a five-star Tempest at 90,000 hit points. It is going to die. And that Ras, uh, not Ras, that Max Fabricator farm just goes up in smoke Strategic launch another detected. nuke is launched this time by team innocent don't know. oh no yeah it's, no it's actually by uh, overlord he's lined up four of these nuke silos pumping out as many nukes as he can it looks like where are these going oh they're going directly for vip oh he has some like vendetta or something on vip that's I mean, the man's down on his luck. You know, he has one quantum gateway trying to get his eco back up and running. But, I mean, that's going to end very shortly, unfortunately, here for him. It does look like Overlord's goal is to take out all of these side islands that might not have SMD, I think is the idea. This one, oh, no, VIP, you got to move. Okay, VIP's been, you know, he's like, move, you got to move. Uh, he might get out of there. I don't think so this might be the demise here of vip he can come back still if he can get out of range but oh it does look like the nuke was going to the eastern side so it's good that he went north does he get out of range no he does not oh <laughs> but it's gonna hurt tries to send the mass to his teammate and now that's the second innocent assassinated it's a 2v1v1 scenario here now and still merton has not broken his alliance yet Kind of interesting. He's just wanting to build up as much as he can. There goes all of uh, VIP's stuff. He didn't have a lot left, but, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do. It's still it's still more fighting going on the, in the northeast section of the map. It's just Tempest v. Tempest at this scenario with a bunch of these Vespers. Of course, they're being, pump, they're being pumped out faster than, well, 
I mean, the numbers advantage is on Cy Beltron's side of things, but it doesn't look like a lot of forces are being devoted to that eastern flank here for Overlord. He's just pumping out just a whole bunch of a hundred. Uh, how much do you actually have? Oh, my 239 T2 sub hunters. That they can only in game over was Inno when I played too. Don't know. It looks like that alliance has been broken. The fight will commence. And that is a lot of battleships coming to that western side. This is what we like to see in Phantom Games. Just a no holds bar. Pump out anything and everything you can. Spam whatever tactics you can and just throw it down your opponent's throat. We're having nukes being launched here against... Where is that position? It's over here, right? Why is it being... I mean, you're attacking these uh, these Rascoms, but they're just hanging out on the, the island, just not doing a whole lot. That is from Rotan. What if anybody would build a YOLO or Paragon this game? I don't think so. Overlord is at 3.5k mass per second. Just that so many Rascoms being built as fast as they can. So many a, you know, aircraft carriers has more nukes launching as well. There's one more still in the clip there. Two more almost finished as well. And that one finishes as well. He's launching that against the Navy. That's going to be a nice positioning. Mo not mop up. Soften up the front and middle lines. There's so many battleships that's going to die in these explosions. It is not going to feel good. He's Merton has built so many. We even see that. They're not just flying around the map there. Using those depth charges. Or it looked like... Yeah. No, he's using the missiles on the uh, the donuts. But there goes the first nuke. He's going to land in the middle. Not take out a whole lot of units, though. A couple of the battleships. That is it. We're waiting for that second one to land. Going to zoom out to see if we can see it. Here it comes. Let's see how many it takes out. Ooh, nice positioning. Oh, it took out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, probably 13 max. That is a ton of units just evaporated for Merton. This is a phantom war if I've ever seen one. And now we have some Tempest from the north coming to join their brethren to fend off the green threat that is Merton. You can see the influence that Merton is having. He's able to just push directly back against his opponent. We're even having some assistance here from the Innocents. Looks like that's another nuke. Where is this one going? Uh, here it looks like it is not the calm but it's taking out this position there was a nuke built here a second one being built that's not going to last very long though lots of destroyers trying to take out some auxiliary factories a lot of rascoms in retreat just make paris <laughs> as vip i mean you can that's one way to do it i don't <laughs> Uh, he doesn't want to uh, do that strategy. I mean, it's not a bad strategy. It's just you are a phantom, and essentially at some point you'll have more eco than you really need to really use. Like, you'll have more than you can really, like, play with. So it's not really that needed as the game goes on. There goes that nuke. There goes a couple of Rascoms. That's got to hurt. But again, that's not the main island, so it's not that much of a concern. Yeah, no, no attempts to build any game enders from anybody, essentially. We just know that, uh, of course, Overlord's not going to build the Paragon, so maybe Team 1 will do that. Or, sorry, Team 1, the Innocents will do that. They have a nuke. That's really about it. They are fighting on the northwestern side. They're taking out a lot of Rascoms here for their opponent, trying to you know take some of that eco out. Everybody is now over 1k mass a second. Not my game. I generally ban Para, then make it. Let's see what's going on. Then who? Nah, nice trick. If making para, then make restriction on it. I mean, eh, in this game, I feel like that's more of a risk. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of eco all at once, of course. But again, it's this game is designed. Or this game mode is designed to just pump out, you know, a thousand of one thing, and throw it at your opponent. Build a thousand strap bombers and just throw it at your opponent. There's not enough shielding on the planet. That will be able to protect a Paragon. It just isn't. I'm thinking we need a 40k map version for Phantom. That would be pretty cool to get like a, a no, just four times the size. All have good CPU, so it's a good, 
So it will be so it'll be good. Yeah, probably a good idea if you're going to have a 40k map to have a pretty good CPU. Just computer in general. Obviously, you know, computer CPU kind of one and the same, but eh. I have a d I have a decent CPU in this computer. Uh but I don't know. I feel like eventually phantom taxes. This is like the true benchmark test of a of a computer for faf is how long can your computer play phantom before it just starts to crumble and be like set on fire because uh you can build a lot of units and there's a lot of simulated rounds artillery movement a whole bunch of stuff uh something about maps maybe in between maybe i think a th no i think they're right i think a 30 by 30 would be pretty nice i mean you look at this and you're like it's kind of tightly packed there's not a lot of spacing between both of the islands having a little bit more would be nice just kind of fan everybody out a little bit so I would love to cast the 30 by 30 uh, Phantom game. So if they end up making a 30 by 30 map, I would love to cast it. Let me know if they end up doing If somebody knows them or map makers or whatever, if they end up making a 30 by 30 version, let me know. Because I feel like that would be at least not better necessarily. Just the spacing would be better. And so that would allow for a little bit more breathing room and not feel like your opponent is like directly on, you know, on top of you when you first break. With integrated T2 base prebuilt, of course, yeah. Yeah, no one likes to see just the engineer just kind of, you know, you know, glide across the ocean and then, you know, plant a mechs down. It's not really enjoyable. And that's why I love version 13, because you don't have to worry about that. Everything's prebuilt. Everything's ready to go. You just start and go. You don't have to do all the standard FAF building. That's why I speed it up in the beginning, just because it's that stuff is boring to just watch somebody just build you're not seeing any action you're not seeing any anything else you're not playing sim city you know we, we don't we don't like to watch fab just to watch people play sim city we, we can watch sim city to watch people play sim city but there goes another omen down into the depths of the ocean overlord trying to pump out so many tempests as fast as he can but again that aren't that fleet here from merton is doing a lot of work and now we're seeing that influence of overlords just be diminished uh, essentially in half he had essentially half of the map to himself and now he has about a quarter of it and he's losing that all the time he has a lot of asf so he's protected in the air game at 600 asfs that's a lot of asfs just that's a lot he will have yolo and way more navy look at how many t3 subs in bs and he is building a yolo and it's going up I mean, decently quick. It's not the fastest I've ever seen, but I'd say at 45 minutes, that's not too bad of a YOLO. You know, all these highlight, you know, groups of mods. You can see, look at all the little Rascoms floating everywhere. Much put north. I will not let Inno Island here. No, I will back. So it's just Overlord talking to Nick saying, uh, trying to convince Nick it looks like to side with him. Uh, that's why I don't have him. Your choice to defend or not. I don't care to die. I'm already dead. I mean, I don't know. Just because you're losing ground, or in this case, C, does not mean that you're out of the game yet. There is a sizable innocent fleet on the northeast. That's a lot of Tempest. You got six right here. and f You got ten, essentially, right here, plus a couple more being built, of course, all the time. Groups of them just being laid out. Another nuke launch from that nuke silos here to the north. We got another one in the clip. And one more in the clip. Where are these going? Probably the fleet. Those are good positioning. Spaced out a little bit, but not too far out. But a lot of these uh, Yasos are going to be, you know, shredded by that nuclear waste. There's not a lot of uh, battleships here on that front line. More nukes being launched by somebody else. This time by Morton. He has one regular nuke and is almost done with his YOLO. Does look like maybe... Nope, that was the one from Overlord. There goes another one. Huge hole in Team 1's fleet right... Sorry, in Merton's fleet right here. Lots of Yasos died. A couple of battleships died, but can't even get close because of all the pretty explosions. Uh, boom. Nice little uh, effect on screen. There is one YOLO missile coming in. Is it going to impact the Oh, it doesn't. It just barely misses it. Takes out one of those donuts. That is perfectly placed by Merton. Actually, almost takes out a second one as well. Even a 
Takes out two experimentals, almost a third and fourth. Wow, that was a really well-placed yellow nuke. Good job, Merton. But now we see the effect of the T3 torpedo boat in torpedo boat torpedo bomber in action. That is a lot of AA coming off those Yasas, though. It's just hard to get in close. What's the what's the count looking like right now for Overlord? We're at 149 T2s, 63 T3s, and then. You know, it's still about 600 ASF, so that's a lot of Air Force to deal with. And that's due to the just sheer number. Look at them all. Look at all of these aircraft carriers on the map. Holy crap. Look at them all. Strategic He's even control k a line of factories just to fit them all. Another nuke is launched. It is from the regular nuke launcher here. And there looks like there's gating in happening here for Overlord, I think. At least that would assume by the... The little black swirls here. Shields are being built as we speak. Strategic launch detected. And here they... Actually, no, they're from Nick. Apologies. They're targeting the YOLO, and they're kind of close. So even if the explosions... Uh, even if their shots don't destroy this thing, the explosions probably will. They're going to space away from it. There goes the YOLO. Almost kills one of the Rascoms. The second one... Again, trying to just float around. That is a huge grab by Team 2's player of... By Team 2's. Sorry, Nick, the Innocence player of Nick. Navy says, by the way, it was fun to watch other games when Nick uh, started to attack his second Phantom. Looks like they played a game earlier that day, maybe? But I know that Nuke lands here. Tries to take out another sizable force. And now that alliance is broken between the other Phantom players. So now it's the Innocence versus the Phantoms again. But the Phantoms are fighting each other this time. And now it is essentially a free-for-all 1v1v2 here in this game at 49 minutes. If you've enjoyed the cast so far, of course, please like and comment down below. Who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be a Phantom or an Innocent this time? Or if it's a Phantom, let me know which one. And, of course, if you haven't hit that sub button, I would greatly appreciate it. This is the 117th cast on the channel. And for those familiar with the Halo franchise, it is... John's or Master Chief's uh, Spartan number or Spartan tag number forget ID number I forget what they're I forget the exact uh, nomenclature for it but that's uh, yeah, just in fa in uh, not in light of the the number but just the fact that look at the green I wish it was forest green to be fair it is forest green is my favorite color but green is you know emerald green is still a good choice here we have another nuke Looks like Nick did not take out the other nuke launcher, but again, the YOLO was the primary target. The primary target was taken out. You can always build another one, but maybe he'll settle with just a bunch of uh, battleships and Yasaos. We have just nukes being thrown at one another now like toys. We have just constant bombardment from all sides. If, if Overlord were to side with the Innocents, he could enclose Merton once again. Doesn't look like he's attacking them directly, just kind of pod shots back and forth. It is looking like he's focusing more on his other phantom uh, frenemy versus the innocents here to the east. While Merton is focusing on, you know, a war on two fronts, and that never really goes the person who has to fight on two fronts. That's another nuke. It's going to land, take out a decent sized Naval force, couple of battleships go down, a couple of uh, AA cruisers go down. So, you know, it does look like Martin's being picked apart one piece at a time. We're even having a couple of cruisers here from Nick just take out this line of T3 naval facilities. That is a lot of naval facilities. I wonder how many Rascoms he has. 191. It is 191 Rascoms. Versus, what is Overlord at? See if I can find one. There we go. 233. Oh, these games. There's so many. And then this is just... Oh, there's an innocent up here. There's a... Nick has teleported one of his Rascoms up here. Targeting one of the nuke launchers. And I don't know if he'll get this one. No, he won't get that one. But he can obviously teleport more in. But it does look like Overload will probably build some PD to protect that installation. 96 for Nick. And then for Cy Beltron, he has 75. So you can kind of see just like the size of the Ecos versus the number of Rascoms. Essentially, 
more than double the eco here from Rotan, more than double the Rascoms, and then of course Overlord just slightly above that with about 40 or so more Rascoms. So again, you just in Phantom Games, you have to pump out Rascoms. You can never not stop building. You can never have enough eco. You might have more eco than you can deal with, but you can never have you can never you can never not have enough. You can never have enough. That that that's it. That's how you say that phrase. Group of battleships here to the north. Kind of just, not landlocked, but they're just kind of just stuck because there's so many units and it's really hard to move. And that is the downside with building a lot of these battleships. It's just it's really hard to move versus, of course, all these Tempests. That you can just, you know, submerge and then just go underneath those units. So it's definitely the advantage of those submersible battleships. The T2 destroyers from the Seraphim can do the same thing, but, of course, they're not as powerful. So... That of course is the it's a it's a versatile advantage, but not by much. T three Yasau's just pummeling anything and everything they can. Very, very powerful, but they are very weak, so you have to be very careful with how you use them. You can see all the torps just being launched just endlessly, just like a machine gun essentially. Happy says Nick. I didn't expect too much. I tried to rebuild because I have lost a lot. It's like endless drama. When you took too much, they will ally again. I just retake my border. Yeah, it's just so it's essentially if your opponent just takes too much of your, you know, territory, you're like, okay, okay, we'll be friends, we'll be friends again. And then, you know, of course they stop attacking and then you rebuild. It does look like Overlord creating a nice little buffer zone for himself. There are more units being devoted to this northern fight, but not as much as you would probably think or probably want you know it's a couple of tempest versus some t2 sub hunters that's not really going to go team innocent's way so i would like to see more you know t2 destroyers obviously more tempests uh missile ships would be kind of a nice inclusion they're mainly focused on ground targets of course but if the units in the you know ocean don't move then the missiles can hit them so that is obviously a uh, good play if your opponent isn't microing. But look at the line of T2 sub hunters, just pummeling everything. Look at these shields, though, from the T3 Seraphim, the Atahana, uh, Atha Athana. I think it's Athana. They can shield a lot of damage, but this Hathum is just being bombarded by T3, and now they're being uh, ground fired. And they sit right below the surface, so the AoE explosions from those rounds are able to impact and at least deal some damage to the subs, taking, you know, some hit points out, which is, of course, better than none. Just more... These, these units are just essentially just guarding. They're not attacking. They're not pulling back. They're just sitting here. One of them is moving forward, but these three are just going to sit here for now. That's probably the best play. doesn't want to push in a fear of losing that defensive formation, but doesn't want to fall back because it doesn't want to give up territory. So it's kind of a, you know, a mix of, I want to sit here, I want to deny, I want to push, but I don't want to give you stuff. So I'll just sit here. To the south, it does look like Mortem was able to ward off that incoming threat, but there is so many more subs being built here. The formation's actually, I don't know if this is a different formation, but it's like extending over here. Let's see if there's a different... Oh, it just looks like they're just sitting there. That is so many sub hunters. That's so many ASF here. What are we at now? 500. So lost a decent chunk, but not too many. There's not a lot of uh, tort bombers being built or replenished, but it does look like he's pumping out, of course, more and more subs. That looks like that's his main goal for now. And, of course, he has, you know, just assembly line subs being built constantly. He's building some... Czars, though, that's an interesting play. He has, of course, the m the nukes, which he's built a lot of PD to, you know, protect, which is a very smart move. Doesn't want them exploding like his uh, frenemies YOLO, which, again, I'm still surprised he hasn't rebuilt that. He easily could. He just, I don't know, doesn't want to, doesn't want to invest in it. Don't know. He could build it on a different island. Which, okay, that is what he's doing. Yeah, I just got to speak about something and, you know, it'll happen essentially. Or not happen. Has Tala Defense now, so that'll help with protecting that new YOLO. And he could just build two at the same time if he really wanted to. But there's, you know, more nukes spread around the map here for both the Phantoms. Team Innocent not really focusing on nukes. 
Focusing more on other things. I think they're trying to keep up with the eco, essentially. There goes a couple of nukes. They're going to different parts of the world. It does look like this is going for this front line. It looks like probably softening it up for his uh, frenemies, innocence, forces. And now it does look like a nuke is going to impact a Tempest directly and kill that. Actually, two of them. Opening up the front line a little bit, but there's a lot of T2 subs that have taken out more and more of those Tempests. They're being replenished, but there's still six on that front line here for Team Innocent and a lot of incoming Vespas, those T2 sub hunters. I think Team 1 would be better off to just build a bunch of Torp uh, launchers and then build a bunch of T2 sub hunters to counter this whole mess. The Tempests do have torpedo defense and their own torpedoes, but it only can do so much. You know, when you have, again, a thousand of anything, it can kill anything. It doesn't really matter the defense is on the thing. So it's something to be aware of. You know, we can see down here to the east just so many, v you know, of these Yasas and Team Phantoms Merton just can't really get super close just because look at all of these, you know, yellow rounds or yellow torpedoes just launching at their opponents. Of course, they're actually, uh, some of these are actually being protected by the TMD on the cruisers themselves. So we have TMD on both sides just shooting at one another. Or sorry, we have missiles shooting at one another with TMD shooting down the missiles. So it's essentially just infinite amount of missiles being thrown at one another, not really just doing anything. This is a main threat here for the Innocents, is a huge group of Yasaos and battleships, which you would surprise that they're not going this way. But they're going this way, which is, you know, you would feel like you want to flank, but that's, and that's a lot of, you know, aircraft carriers that could easily be taken out, and a lot of battleships that are not engaging the main fleet, just kind of hanging back. It almost feels like Nick is using his Yasaos as is essentially cannon fodder while his battleships guys just kind of just hang out maybe he's just buying time for something but I don't know what he'd be buying time for there's really nothing he can buy time for unless he's building some sort of you know YOLO or something but I don't see anything like that Merton has finished the YOLO and is loading as we speak Your even has more TMD back. it does look like another missile will be launched here by team Phantom from Overlord from this line of hot not hives, line of apocalypses. Still got one in the clip. About to have two, just launched that one. About to have another one. Another nuke by Merton. This time it is actually not from the YOLO. What's it? Oh, it's from this one over here. And he has one more still. So probably wants to release that one before it gets destroyed or possibly gets destroyed of course he still has that yellow which he probably wants to keep hidden for as long as possible but it's just going to launch it anyways and forget what i just said game end for tomorrow says overlord maybe they're playing at night and the game's not going to end till the next day for him there's a whole group of yasals just eliminated bro the subs are not attacking you says nick like bro the heck well they are there and they're in the way essentially The funny part is the war is everywhere. Merton pushed south. I pushed north. Looks like there is a huge effort by the Phantoms to just eliminate the Innocents now. Have they teamed up again? No, they have not. But I wouldn't be surprised if they don't do that pretty soon. Nick uh, pings this location of building a bunch of Tempests. I mean, yeah, that's a group of Tempests being built. But that's essentially what Cybeltron is doing over here, except kind of in a line. Needs to reorder his Rascoms to build more of those. But it does look like some engineers are coming to get some reclaim, which Merton is not super happy about. We're about to cross the one-hour game time marker. Oh, that mean you push me, Merton? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not going to... I'm not a green... Uh, well, I mean, it's just engineers, so it's not really the worst thing. But let's see. Does another YOLO nuke launch? Not yet. It is almost loaded. It does look like this one is from the innocent side this time. Don't know where this is going. Where is he going? He's going straight. Oh, that is a huge. 
Oh. That nuke need to hit, says Nico one It's going to take a while. This is like Morton launches his own nuke, this time from that YOLO, going for this position, wanting to knock out some of those production facilities. You know, it kind of looks like it's going for this huge group, and I say huge group of 667 tor uh, T2 sub hunters. That is so many. You think that's T1, but that's actually T2. And they're firing on some units down there. But is the Rascoms going to move in time? I don't think so. The Tempest might be trying to get out of there, but that nuke is going to land. How many Rascoms die in this explosion? All of them. All of them die in that explosion. That is a whole lot of eco that Overlord just lost. He's now on par with Merton. Wow, that's a huge grab by the Innocents. Oh, <laughs> Overlord says, oh my gosh, how much mass uh, killed the nuke. Greetings from Germany, says Nick. I was thinking it's Merton's nuke. Let's see how much. 549,000. <laughs> uh, Over Overlord's upset is a declaration of war. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of eco that he lost. That's a huge grab by, by the Innocents. Just not necessarily cutting the eco in half, but it's a huge chunk. I should have looked at it before the nuke landed. But man, that's probably, yeah, like you said, about 100 Rascoms. Maybe at least at least 50 went up in that uh, explosion. How many does he have remaining? We saw 230 earlier. He's only at 247. Yeah, so all of that progress that we saw last uh, before the last time that we saw um, those, uh, we calculated the Rascom counts. Uh, it's essentially no progress. That has got to hurt. Do we do a two-minute break? Yes, that's what the pausing is for. It is nice that we don't have to wait the two minutes or whatever time for the pause to write itself. It's just an initial, okay, we're back online. Really nice. And there is the main engagement here of this fleet battle. We have T1 subs versus T2 subs and, of course, Tempest and Omens. I do like the, I don't know, I feel like Overlord has the better mix. Not just because, of course, he has, you know, 600-something uh, torpedoes, or not torpedoes, but subs. But it's just the fact that because Team 1 is using T1 subs, they're not very strong. And yeah, they have a bunch of Tempest, but they're more expensive, they take longer to make, and they fire, I think, a little bit slower. I heard an explosion go off. Oh, it is to the east against Nick's base. Oh, that's got to hurt. That YOLO did land. Ouch. That's a lot of infrastructure just gone. I'll go back to that in a second. But look at all these subs just laying in wait. Look at them all. Look at all these subs. Just, you know, the sub hunter to the max on this uh, game, though. Dang. Take a nice couple of those screenshots of all those subs. So many subs. Don't see really anything else. It does, you know, it does look like Merton is hanging back. I think he's just going to sit with his YOLO for a while. We have another teleport coming in from Nick. Or, no, that's from Nick. Yeah, they're uh, Seraphim. They have some shielding on them, so maybe we'll see them take out the YOLO once again. The first one explodes, takes out a couple of hit points. The second one being primaried. A lot of this PD will be taken out by these explosions does look like Nick's going to have to devote more and more comms or rascoms to that endeavor. Only took out, you know, so not a lot of hit points and it's recharging or regening as we speak. Does it look like there were missiles coming in? Oh, from the from the ships nearby. I hear rascoms in the distance exploding and that huge group of Top Hunters is just pushing the Innocents back. And we even see the sim speed dropping to negative one. And that just goes to show you. There's the nuke launched. Oh, that's got to hurt. Nick's base. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. It held out for so long. And now essentially everything on that island is gone. Just a couple of... No, they're all gone. Everything is gone on that island in two nukes. Oh, that's got to hurt. What is Nick's eco at? 1.4. Not bad. It still has a decent amount of eco to work with, but all of his infrastructure is gone. You know, his build power is gone. 
He has whatever he has left remaining, and it looks like he is fleeing to his teammate's base. That's essentially the best place to sit. Just Strategic pump out a bunch of T3 detected. facilities up here and just call it good. More detected. nukes are being launched probably from... Okay, we have Strategic one down here. Another one over here. Another. We have three nukes launching at the same time for Merton. We should see some counter nukage here pretty soon. We see two 110 loaded, so... And one more, I was about to lose, but about five nukes loaded here for Team uh, oh, Phantom's player of Overlord. This one's just going to carpet bomb everything. Is that the comm? Oh, that's just a Rascom. Okay, it's not out of the way, but man, that's got to hurt. We have spy planes trying to figure out where everything is at. This is the regular nuke. Where's the YOLO nuke? This is the YOLO nuke. We have even some Awashes coming in to take out some of those naval units love to see it it's going after this position here with a decent amount of build power what's the smd look like there is none and that nuke is going to land Ooh, that's gonna hurt another nuke lands let's watch the very pretty explosion go off does look like uh, the innocents have dealt with most of those sub hunters from overlord but there it goes all the engineers are killed off the shields are down Everything just goes up in smoke. All of those hives just annihilated. Those factories, you know, some of them still online, but not that many left. Man, that's got to hurt. And yeah, at negative one still. I don't know if this game... Let's see if it... I, don't, I can't up it because it can only go as fast as the uh, the right side of that slash can go. So you can kind of you can kind of start to see it on screen. We can kind of see the slowdown a little bit. Negative one isn't that bad. You can kind of tell. It's like it looks like I'm recording not in 60 frames, kind of thing. It's kind of what it looks like. We have a couple of uh, Rascoms here from Merton looking for some wreckage to scoop up, but they're going to be shot by some sub hunters in the middle. And Merton expanding to that eastern side, taking out whatever's remaining for the innocents. Carte Blanche here for Merton takes anything and everything out. This Awash is, you know, got a cup one kill to his name. And uh, it's taking a lot of damage. But how is that YOLO? It's still online with more PD protecting it. And a bunch of these uh, SMD online as well. That nuke is going to load as fast as it can. It's going to pump out as much as it can. And the Innocence and Overlord have to deal with that. Because here comes another one. It is inbound. One SMD gets shot off. It's not enough. It needs to. This position is not going to be gone. All of those Rascoms fleeing. They need to get out of there as fast as they can. And they're not going to. Some of them aren't going to make it. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's going to hurt. Oh, kaboom. Takes everything out on the island. There's even some Rascoms still haven't felt the full weight of it just as of yet. There's one still alive walking around. Is this one going to survive? Huh. Oh, it is. That's weird. It looked like I thought it was going to die out, but it doesn't. It's the last surviving member is that Rascom on the island. But more nukes impacting everything here for the innocents. Merton is just done. But it does look like those and some of those nukes are coming from Overload as well. It looks like the Phantoms are just like kind of done with the innocents at this point. They're like, okay, it's long. You know, we've left you alone for long enough. Time to deal with this. And you can just see the three corners of the map, white, green, and blue and red. And that blue is going to severely diminish within a couple of minutes just due to all of these nukes coming in. The Innocents haven't prepped any nuke defense. They know YOLO's existed for a while now. And now they're pumping out, of course, as many as they can. But I feel like that's a little too late. They have six in this one, so that'll protect them from a little bit. Three in that one and five in that one. We have some teleporting Rascoms of Merton. Gonna start taking out these SMDs here. Actually, that's Nick. Never mind. That is not uh, Rotan. What are we? Oh, he was over here. Maybe is he wounded? No, I uh, don't know what that was about. But anyway, maybe he didn't teleport over here. I don't know where he could have gone. Honestly, hmm. I don't know. I don't know where he went. Doesn't really matter now because it really didn't affect the game that much. But here comes another nuke. I wish there was some sort of like naval based SMD that you can deploy. But oh man, there it goes. Lands on top of that Tempest, takes out two of them and a couple of facilities. 
and opens the door for these omens to push on through. It is really just a full bore, non-stop, just attack on the innocents. We even just have the phantoms essentially ignoring one another. Overlord, you know, isn't going to align himself with Merton again, but he's going to say, I'm just going to send engineers, just going to reclaim. You kill them. That's fine. Don't care. Just want the reclaim. Main focus, of course, is the innocents. They're now on one main island. And that pressure is not letting up more and more nukes landing all of the time. The innocents, if you voted on the innocents, I don't know how that's going to go. A lot of these sub hunters are going to be taken out by these Yasao, but there's not really a lot of facilities. And now there's another nuke landing here from that YOLO. And that one is going to land, and that one's going to hurt. Oh, look at all those forces being eradicated by Torps. But it doesn't even matter. Even if they take out one wave, there's just an insurmountable amount of pressure here coming from the Phantoms. The encirclement is occurring. You would figure that at one point maybe somebody would betray somebody, but maybe it's going to be a just take out the innocents and then go for one another, I think. Here comes that YOLO nuke. It is inbound. It's a little slow. Of course, it is at negative one. But, of course, the more units die, the faster the game goes. We have a huge line of ASF here from... Oh, that's a, oh, that's a lot. That 700 ASF here for Merton. Let's take a look at that nuke. It's going to take out at least one Tempest and one that was building... And a bunch of Rascoms. There it goes. Oh, that's got to hurt. Team 1's... I'm oh, sorry, Team 1. Innocence Eco. Ooh. Some of them will survive underneath the water, but... For how long? Oh, nope. There goes some of them. Just took a second. And there's... The pressure is still mounting here for the Innocence. They're still holding on. They're not giving up quite yet. I feel like one of the Phantoms should be making their move pretty soon. And you would assume at this point, you know, with all of these units being produced constantly, a huge amount of subs still for Overlord. He will not not build those. He will just build them constantly until he can build them no more. Tempest under the water, you need to pop these guys out and use them for defense. You know, hiding them under the water is only going to de not delay the inevitable, but... At least it'll buy you more time than keeping them underneath. There they go. They're popping out of the water. And going to deploy their giant cannons of doom. They are better suited to take out battleships. And look, two of them fall fairly quickly. But they're just constantly being bombarded all the time. And this is a lot of pressure. Team Innocent needs to do something about this. We are seeing some conflict here in the middle. Between the two phantoms. Not a lot. Just... A little bit. It does look like it's just due to the fact that units are moving in onto the innocent side of things. But it does look like Green is starting to fan a little bit northward. Maybe he's thinking about cutting off that front line here for Overlord and then sweeping completely westward. Might be an idea, but there is, of course, pressure here to the east. And there's more subs coming in and more T3 Torp Bombers on the Prowl. We have 97 inbound. Let's hit the T button to track one of them. That's not the one I want to track. That one. I want to track that one. Turn the camera. You can watch these shots coming in. Turn off all the icons. There it goes. So it's like, why is it detaching the track? They're just circling about, trying to take out some of those ships. You can see one just being taken out by some AA. They get the turnaround. They're going to fly home. Let's do another turn around. Here they come. It's just a cool shot. Look at all those. And look at all those planes. Look at them all. <laughs> look at them like fly across the map. All of their shots, you know, just landing everywhere. Look at this nonsense over here. They're taking out all the subs in the middle first is what it looks like. Look at all those torpedoes just sailing towards their targets. Multiple submarines going down at a time. Team Innocent trying to deploy whatever they can, but not going to matter. They have a couple of uh, all washes, which is very good, but uh, but uh, YOLO. <laughs> that's that's what I have to say. That. And Merton is building his own. And another nuke is launched. Still hasn't rebuilt it. Just leaving that as uh, evidence of his failures of losing his first YOLO, I would assume. Now we have six 
of those donuts built here in the back. I think the last was it the last game I casted. Was it the I think, I think it was the one? No, it was the one before that. It was the 350 sub. Thank you, cast. There was just 20 plus uh, donuts lined up in a line and just glass the entire island. It was great to watch. It's the screenshot or the thumbnail for the video. But man, that uh, that was intense to watch. More and more fighting going on in the middle between both these phantoms. Team two getting not team two. Team innocent getting a little bit of a reprieve from that southern side, but it's still the pressure is still there. And of course the nukes are landing all the time. A lot of them have been taken out. Looks like probably from I don't think they're from I mean they could have been from strap bombers, but I feel like not. There's a couple more SMD, of course, that have been loaded. This one, the nukes island was taken out. Looks like there was maybe some attempt from the units that came in to go after that, but I don't see any RASCOM wrecks. I don't see any of that. So yeah, they could have just been from shells from the, either the Tempest, not the Tempest, probably the Hathooms or whatever was here to the south. But a lot of the SMD protection is down. There's more here to the east, and they're loading as fast as they can here for Nick. Nick, you know, does still have a decent amount of eco at 1.1, but both in it, both innocents, both phantoms, you know, are three times the amount of eco that either one of these players has. But now we can see there is a pull away here by the phantom player of Merton. I just heard aircraft carrier full by, by uh, Selbatron, but it looks like there's an ASF force going after those all watches. There goes one, there goes two, there goes three, all of them killed in one fell swoop. The air fight is engaged. There's a lot of AA pressure from these aircraft carriers, but man, their goal was completed, taking out those threats. There's one down here. Don't, they need to get it out of the way. It's going to just be annihilated. Don't, what are you doing? You got to, no, don't send it into them. You got to send it away. There is a couple of AA turrets on that yes, not yes, so that I'll wash it, but there's not a lot. All those ASF have to do is turn around. Nick, what are you doing? Nick, you gotta, Nick, Nick, what are you doing? It's not worth it. We have a decent amount of solaces coming after those yes owls here. And now he turns around. I'm like, what is he doing? Overlord could easily have just turned around, killed it, and then still got away, but that's, I uh, don't know about that. We are seeing that push to the south once again. We have salvations being been built here by Overlord. He has three of them. Does he have? He doesn't have a Paragon. He said he wasn't going to build one. Uh, there isn't one there. There isn't one there. It's not there. Not there. Not there. Nukes are landing right here just on the edge of that range. Not edge of the range. Edge of that island. It will encompass all four of those rapid fire artillery installations, but they're targeting the YOLO. And of course, they are Seraphim Shields. They can take a lot of punishment, but there are some Rascoms teleporting in to take out that YOLO artillery coming in all the time. The shields are down. And that was probably the main goal of the Rascoms was to take out the shield emitters. There goes the YOLO. It's about to die. 1.18 million. A million mass destroyed by one YOLO. Most of those Rascoms are being dealt with, but the artillery will do the rest of the damage. Couple more impacts. There it goes. Everything is killed off here. There's a couple of hives here and a couple of SMD, but that is it. Oh, it's the second yellow that's been killed this game. Did that nuke land? The nuke did not land. Huh? Doesn't look like it landed, but some it does look like some Rascoms teleported in, and they took out two of the four artillery there's still actually the, yeah they took two of the four out but the oh my goodness it's now negative three how oh oh, oh, ha. oh, oh. one thousand one thousand skimmers e2 torpedo bombers this is just intense blanketing the skies you cannot have enough this is just this is nuts what I'm looking at right now. This is crazy. Look at look at them all. Look at all that nonsense. That's what that is. That is just straight nonsense. Those look like Nico one did bow out. It is a 1v1v1 scenario. The air fight is engaging. Those 
Zars. Those, yeah, those Zars are being dealt with. I was going to say, um, I don't know what I was going to say, but those donuts are being dealt with. That is so many restorers, though. Of course, the restorers aren't known for their ground fire capabilities, but 500 restorers are on their way, and nothing, and I mean nothing, will prepare Merton for the amount of pressure coming off of those air units. We still have, you know, so many of these. How many do we have? 500 still, and how many ASF? 700. That number is dwindling, of course, all the time. But look, there's hardly anything left here for Merton. This is just spam central in here. Three different types of air units. All of them good in their own rights. And nukes landing all the time. Does look like the innocent player of Psy Beltron does have a, a decent amount of reprieve now. Is making inroads to the west. But honestly, this is nuts. A lot of those torps are taken out, though. It is negative two currently. It's not terrible. It's gone up a little bit, but now the blanketing of the skies has once again occurred, this time in the form of T-3 gunship. This is just so many. This is just so many. Let's see if I can, can't get a forward shot of this. Like, what does it look like when it's coming head on? Oh, my. Here they come. Here they come. Ah. Let's go over there. That way. There we go. Look at them all. Look at all of those gunships coming in you cannot build enough in this game and this is this is why we love phantom games is we see the absurdity in this game just you know crank it up to 11 we have mass fabricator farms going down donuts crashing on enemy structures we have tons and tons of firepower coming off of the restores it doesn't matter how much damage you know these restores can do individually you know there's still so many 500 500 restorers just so so many where's the calm of Merton when he's over here by his lonesome does he have he doesn't have teleporter those donuts are dealt with his main island is gone doesn't have a left a lot standing he's lost his YOLO he still has some nukes down here he's building more all the time that'd be a nice target for those Restores to go after, and that's what they're doing. They're just blanketing whatever they have. And nukes going off for those main fleets for Merton. Wants to keep pushing northward. Does look like Selbertron, Cy Beltron, Cybertron, apologies, uh, is up to 2.4 thousand mass per second. It's actually catching up to Merton. But of course, we still have two salvations online, still for Overlord. Man, this um, this has been nuts. It's been a great game so far, and man, Overlord just went, no, I'll just build as many air units as I can and just throw them at my opponent at one point. But he's not even stopping. He's just as much damage as he can get done while they're moving. Because if he stops them, it's you know not pointless, but now he's moving. Is he moving northward? Oh, he's moving north. He's gonna go, he is going to go all the way. Look at that. You can see the plans. This base needs shielding. He's building Cy Biltron. I, I love the ambition. Way too late. <laughs> way, not way, way too late. Just a little late. 86%. That will not, oh, it's going to, maybe it'll finish by the time those restorers get there, but doesn't even know about them. They are on their way. He doesn't even, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what's going on. Oh, no. <laughs> He doesn't know. There's torp bombers moving southward. They're going to run into that fleet of ships. And, man, that is here they come. Oh, here they come. The rat, the SAM sites, everything's going to just move. you got to move these RASCOMs. You have the Salvation now targeting the Paragon. I'm assuming he knows about it. Uh, no, he doesn't know about it. Just was targeting something. He'll see the Paragon now, and that's probably going to be the main target of these restorers. Here they come. They're being diminished slowly, but again, it is the keyboard here is slowly. Looks like they're just going to sit here and just pummel everything into the ground. And look, that's a huge up. Take out the Paragon. That's a huge opportunity. Yep, he sees the focus fire on some of them. Takes out a huge chunk of restorers, though, but 
That's a lot of Rascoms that went up in smoke. Drops Psy Beltron's eco to 1.7. There's still a decent horde of restorers. The sim speed now at zero. Thank goodness. A lot of that uh, slowdown has been diminished. Man, but that was a huge play by Overlord building so many gunships. I'm just making sure we don't miss anything. Once was 500 plus is now reduced to 100 and there's so much air pressure here it's just hard to deal with they're trying to target anything and everything they can maybe go after some smd and maybe an i but again that's not really worth it in this game well the smd is not necessarily the i now they're just going to sit over this position and take whatever else out they can but man that was look at the de look at the devastation gone 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 was one nuke to be fair gone gone. <laughs> Psy Beltron got the Paragon just barely and then it blew up. <laughs> it did not last very long. But to his credit, he is pushing with Beltron. Be wow, I cannot speak today. They are pushing on Overlord. They're trying to diminish his influence. And at this point, I don't know. You have three of these Strategic salvations on the line. Nukes, land, nukes launching all the time. I don't know if the combined forces of Muraton and Cybeltron have enough. There's additional nukes, you know, just everywhere here. I guess this is just the four. I feel like there should be one on the main base somewhere, but eh. I don't know. I'm not the one playing the game, of course. I feel like a backup is always important, but uh, when you have all of this air pressure, I don't know. I feel like these ASFs are kind of just useless now. 400 of them just kind of hanging out. We have some subs dealing with everything. The Comma of Muraton needs to get out of there. Does he knows what's going on. I don't know why he's not moving. I know he's probably microing his forces here to the north, but his Comma is severely under threat here. Once he gets that notification that, you know, ACU is under attack, he needs to move. There goes the new takes out that huge line of Rascoms. And now it's just him versus, well, some subs. And Psy Beltron has been offered an alliance. I'll just uh, accept it. But I'm not in the game, so it doesn't actually do anything for me. But the comm is under threat. And there goes those hit points. 240 hit points a second will not save you. Looks like he is consigned to his fate. And the hit points just drop on that commander. Into the red. And there he goes. The commander of Mel Merchon has been defeated by the other phantom it is a 1v1 scenario now Cy Beltron versus the world in this case the world is overlord at 1313 that is so much of the map just gone the whole southern half is just eliminated which to be fair it's about the same amount of influence but you have three artillery and a bunch of nukes versus nothing I was like please don't build another paracon that would be ridiculous at this stage you got you got to push with whatever you have in the navy you have to take out something and I don't know if that's going to happen though overlord 1313 has now amassed another 600 t2 torp bombers with of course additional forces in the ground in the ground on the ground and in the water don't know if it will matter at this point. Maybe I'll speed it up to one. Can I? Oh, I can get two out of it. I'll speed it up to one just to speed it up just a tiny bit. I know we're over an hour in the recording. We're actually over we're close to an hour and a half at this point. Man, this has been a crazy game. Bunch of nukes, bunch of everything in this game. I think that's the most air units I have seen on screen at one time in 117 casts. That's so much air power there goes the nuke it's gonna land take out whatever it takes out oh there it goes it does look like Cy Beltron did get access to Sarah from tech before Nick died though that's good at least he's able to have access to the Hathum it does look like Cy Beltron does throw in the towel I mean it was going his way eventually anyways and Cy Beltron knew that and that is the game everyone at 1 hour 18 minutes and 15 seconds Overlord conquers the world and is the sole survivor of Phantom and wins it. Sole survivor of Phantom and wins it as a Phantom. So again, 
Thank you so much, everybody, to not to for watching the video. Please like and comment down below what your favorite moment of it was. Mine, I feel like, was just the horde of air units we saw. Just decimated everything left. Cybotron in a very weak state. And then once the nukes started coming in, once the artillery started coming in, after Overlord dealt with Mertron, that was it. Underrated player of the game probably goes to Nick. Nick did a very good move of teleporting in some of those Rascoms and taking out the first yellow. Tried to do it again, but failed. I mean, he tried. You know, Merton was ready for it, but at least he tried to take them out, which, you know, better than nothing. And he held he held Mertron at bay for a very long time with some assistance from Cybiltron, of course, but uh, Nick held them off for a while. So, again, I think the underrated player of the game goes to Nick this time but again thank you so much everybody for watching again please sub to the channel if you haven't already done so and again thank you so much for watching and i will see all of you in the next one